Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news is a bombshell. General Motors filing a lawsuit against Fiat Chrysler that alleges Sergio Marchionne, the late CEO of FCA, bribed his way through deals with the UAW. And that's not all. Yeah, and also, just a short time ago, the UAW began formal procedures to oust Union President Gary Jones and his Lieutenant Vance Pearson over their alleged involvement in the corruption scandal. We're business editor Rob Maloney following both of these major stories. Let's start with the lawsuit. These allegations really read like a, a movie plot, Rob. Well, Devin, when you go through this 95-page filing here, you begin to wonder if it was Marchioni or Machiavelli, because what they're saying is Marchioni was far beyond the sort of friendly competitor who got the competition for nothing. They're saying he schemed his way into injuring GM in massive ways. The General Motors racketeering suit says Marchioni had a poker tell at the 2015 traditional handshake. The late FCA CEO not only shook then UAW President Dennis Williams' hand, he also enthusiastically hugged him. GM now claiming the broad smiles and congenial atmosphere exuded that day stemmed from a bribe-induced pact to put the screws to GM. The complaint reads, quote, FCA paid millions of dollars in prohibited payments and things of value to UAW officers and UAW employees. These FCA group bribes were authorized by its then CEO Sergio Marchioni, now deceased. Marchioni authorized these bribes and additional things of value to UAW officials so FCA could more effectively compete and thrive against GM and ultimately attempt a merger with GM, end quote. Now, that may seem difficult to follow, but it's simple. GM is alleging over a decade, Marchioni went about the business of using the pattern bargaining agreement. FCA went first in 2015 and made a deal with the UAW that put heavy burdens on GM in a way of costly side deals and work agreements. And in so doing, GM says Marchioni hoped it would force GM into a merger he lobbied for openly for years. Fiat Chrysler today said the whole thing is preposterous, meant to impede not only the FCA merger with Peugeot, but also damage the now ongoing going national contract talks with the United Auto Workers. FCA says it will vigorously fight this meritless lawsuit. And the United Auto Workers were very busy today as well. Its International Executive Board met in an, an emergency session in Southfield and charged uh, uh, and then charged under its Constitution Article 30, a story we talked about on Friday, former President Gary Jones and Region 5 Director Vance Pearson. The board seeks to expel them from their positions and also from the union. And they're citing improper expense accounting related to the UAW golf outings corruption scandal that we've heard so much about. Back to you. Well, Rod, uh, we know uh, how FCA feels about this lawsuit. What are, are we hearing anything from the union about it? Well, you know, the union had a couple of interesting things to say. It pointed out that uh, Alphonse Iacobelli, whom we didn't name in this story, but he was the head of the UAW FCA uh, team uh, here, not the UAW, it was the, the FCA team negotiating with the UAW. And they say that GM hired him away from FCA after all of this. So they're a little puzzled by it, but they also say that they're doing the very best they can in order to straighten out their union and take the tough action they can to make this corruption scandal go away and be behind them so they can move forward. Yeah. All right, Rod. Okay, now to more breaking news, this time on Gross Eel, where we've just learned the free bridge is set to reopen tomorrow night. Officials from Wayne County and Gross Eel met today to discuss the repairs that have been going on for a week now. Ten steel plates should be installed by tomorrow to open the bridge to traffic. We follow the president's orders. That's what Gordon Sondland, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union, said today about the campaign to pressure Ukraine into investigating political rival Joe Biden and the 2016 election. Just one of many eye-opening moments at today's impeachment hearings. Alice Barr following it all from the Capitol tonight. Alice, good evening. Good evening. Ambassador Sondland's testimony is the most anticipated so far. The one-time Trump donor had direct contact with the president, and he says the administration is withholding documents that could help prove what happened. The name Gordon Sondland has come up at every turn in the impeachment inquiry. Now it's his turn. Do you swear or affirm? The U.S. ambassador to the European Union delivering bombshell testimony that directly ties President Trump to a pressure campaign in Ukraine. Was there a quid pro quo? As I testified previously, 
with regard to the requested White House call and the White House meeting? The answer is yes. Ambassador Sondland says the quid pro quo pushed by President Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, was this. Ukraine's president would get the White House meeting he wanted if he publicly promised to investigate a company tied to Joe Biden's son and a discredited theory about 2016 election meddling. Mr. Giuliani was expressing the desires of the president of the United States, and we knew these investigations were important to the president. Ambassador Sondland denying what other witnesses have described as back-channel diplomacy in Ukraine, saying the Secretary of State, Vice President, and others knew what was happening. Everyone was in the loop. And Sondland said he it came to no believe secret. Ukraine wouldn't get the military aid it needed until it announced the investigations. Two plus two equaled four in my mind at that point. Republicans emphasizing he never heard that directly from the president. It was a presumption. And Ukraine did nothing but still got its aid. You got all three of them wrong. They get the call, they get the meeting, they get the money. It's not two plus two, it's 0 for three. Ambassador Sondland acknowledged President Trump told him directly there was no quid pro quo. The president echoing those words today. I want nothing, I want nothing. I want no quid pro quo. But Sondland's testimony raises the question, did President Trump's words match his actions? A parade of top officials Ambassador Sondland implicated today, including Vice President Pence, have now come out denying any wrongdoing. In Washington, Alice Barr, Local 4. Now, there's more testimony to go this evening. We will be bringing you tomorrow's testimony again live, both on air and on ClickOnDetroit.com online. The hearings tomorrow, scheduled to begin at 9 a.m. as they did today. A man is going to spend the rest of his life behind bars for a deadly shooting at a fence company in Clinton Township. Be thankful that Charity Motley will never do this to another family, ever. Our Victor Williams caught up with the victim's family after this morning's sentencing. They tell him they're just glad they can finally move on. Jerry Motley Jr. will spend the rest of his life behind bars in prison without the possibility of parole. It's a sentence the family of the victim says at least is some closure. People versus Motley. Ready on. Jerry Motley Jr. walked into the courtroom Wednesday surrounded by the family and friends of the man he's been found guilty of killing at a Clinton Township fencing company back in January of 2018, 61-year-old Tom Badke. His daughter-in-law, Chelsea, making a very emotional victim impact statement. You rotting in a cell for the rest of your life will never bring dad back, but it's the most that we will get. I have no sympathy for you. Your accusations throughout this trial have been bizarre, and just like your original plan, it failed. From this point forward, we will rest well knowing that justice has been served for the bad key family. Other family members also had the chance to have their voices heard before Judge Carmelinga made a decision locking Motley away for the rest of his life. You will be sentenced to mandatory life with the Department of Corrections without any possibility of parole. Judge Marlinga also made some choice comments of his own. As much as capital punishment would be appropriate for the crime that you committed, in some ways, <clears throat> this descent into oblivion is probably even more appropriate. The only words said by Motley were uttered towards our cameras before he was taken away. The crimes that Jerry Motley has committed were malicious, disgusting, and entirely unforgivable. And back here live tonight, Judge Marlinga did say in court that if he could have, he would have given Motley more time in jail if only he could have. Reporting live out here tonight in Clinton, Clinton Township, Victor Williams, Local 4. Yeah, it's good, though. The family feels like that they can move on now after this. Victor, thanks. The work on I-75 in Oakland County was supposed to be wrapping up right about now, but as you can see from this video from Sky 4 earlier, it is not ready. And today, MDOT made it official. This phase of the project won't be done before the holidays. Our Kim DiGiulio has the update and shows us why this is really putting the squeeze on businesses. A slow start to spring and an early start to winter unfortunately means that segment two of the modernized I-75 project here in Oakland County has been delayed. We're behind schedule. Just when drivers thought the project was about to wrap up for the winter. It sucks. I live here. Everybody who is anywhere near the artery knows it, it sucks. The plan was for the northbound side of I-75 between 13 Mile and Coolidge to be finished by Thanksgiving. 
We're not going to make that. The fact of the matter is we just, we have our mindset to get northbound back on northbound at some point. We're hoping by the end of December right now. And the timing couldn't be worse for businesses as the holiday shopping season kicks into high gear. I think construction affects businesses no matter what, no matter what time of the year. Again, keep in mind the businesses aren't located on the freeway proper, so there are different ways to get to different locations. The southbound construction is scheduled to start this March. That's when we'll see the flip again, this time on the opposite side. Both directions of I-75 will be maintained on the northbound side while we rebuild the southbound side. This means potholes will still be an issue this winter on I-75. Uh, we're going to have to work our way through the pothole season on the southbound side as we did for both directions last year. While this delay will impact businesses around this area for the holiday shopping season, MDOT wants to remind everybody that originally this project was supposed to last six years before they condensed it, so two years won't be as hard of a hit on the businesses surrounding this area. Along I-75, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. Pretty good news for online retailers because that is such a shopping hub oh, that you've goodness, bottled yeah. up for a long time. You just kind of want to avoid it. Yeah, exactly. Well, when work started on the old uh, Hudson site along Woodward downtown, nobody expected this to be a problem. Yeah, it stinks. Like boiled eggs. <laughs> rotten. Rotten eggs. Oh, rotten. rotten boiled eggs. <laughs> New tonight, what's causing a foul smell in and around the work site and what's being done to make it go away. Hank. Hi, Kim. We are live here in the Help Me Hank phone bank, and we want to hear from you. 313-298-WDIV. Do you have a problem or a concern that you want investigated? Our team is here live, and we are ready to take your tips. And coming up at 530, we are helping a local woman in a battle with her apartment complex over a danger inside. We're live, and we'll see you right after the break. Our dry stretch comes to an end tomorrow. We'll see showers in here by lunch, but look at this. 48 just when the rain gets started. How warm will those temperatures get tomorrow? And is it our last of the warmth coming up? A beautiful 20 year old girl found shot and killed inside this home in Warren. Her boyfriend under arrest tonight. What we're learning about what went wrong.